Hello and welcome back to Mondo 8-Bit. In this video, I'll take a look to this. It's a machine that I still missed in my collection. It's a mighty Komoto Plus 4. It's not working. I will try to repair it, but uh, let's start from the beginning for the unboxing. Yes, this is actually the box that I received from the seller. It's quite big, but after a while I found inside the plus four. Look at it! Uh, I bought it on eBay. The seller listed it as uh, not working. It's not uh, too bad. Yeah, maybe someone has glued the label with some not nice glue, but some scratches but the important thing will be to make it to work it's time to open up the plus four the plus four and see what's inside i know that the, the keyboard connector is uh, damaged but i think I, it's possible to fix it i think that the um, this machine was used as a spare because it's missing the, as you can see, it's missing the shield for the pad and there's, there's are some right on the CPU and also the pad, I think that the pad is not working. But the first thing, I want to do now is uh, change the power connector because I don't have a plus four power supply and then put this that is a, a C64 power supply connector so I can try and see what this board do Ooh. I see also another thing empty runs put in place the connector for the power supply I could go and remove even the empty runs, just to be sure. By the way, the case is not too bad damaged. There's some scrap and, scuff and some dirt, but there's no problem. The problem, I think that it's here. Look, it's not really in good condition but uh, maybe it's possible to or to fix it or to trim a little and remove this plastic here so to use the lower connectors we'll see apart this uh, it's uh, a little dirty someone have glued the label it's not nice but uh, this is thing i could uh, fix later now some more to do to remove the power supply and uh, why I'm talking about this uh, it's possible to change the connector because actually the pins on both connectors are the same so there's no problem and uh, even if the pins of the connector are put in a different way actually the board needs just the same power that the C64 use so it's safe to do it in a nice way but I want to clean this old mess let's see that uh, the same pins have uh, the same place just this one is not present here but this is uh, ground and it's already present here 
and actually the board is the same pins for this one so there is really no problem to do this Time to test. But nothing at all. First things first, remove empty runs. After a quick test, five of the seven empty ramps were bad. Ok, change them all. I built also an adapter for the C6510 from the C64, for shadowing probably. Ok, a little recap. I changed the CPU with the Franken CPU. I removed also all the RAM and uh, tested it, still the last four give a black screen. I checked with the oscilloscope and the CPU seems ok, but TED have very strange signals. I can't do anything other than wait for the TED, for the new TED that I ordered. So, with the magic of editing, you see this in few seconds. I think that I have to wait for a couple of weeks. And finally, I got the TED that I was waiting for. Now I can try to swap the TED. Okay, it's on place. I have to make some voiceover because this part of the video I've lost the audio. Still a black screen. There must be something other. Other than the TED, we all know that the problem for the 264 series machines are the CPU and the PLA. Luckily, Daniel Mantione, the genius behind the GAL PLA for the C64, created the PLA 16V8 and made it available to us. It's not expensive at all. Easy to build and most important works flawlessly. I got and built one. Another great invention from Daniel is the 6502 to 8501. It's a replacement for the 264 CPUs that let you use a 6502 in place of the infamous 8501 or 7501. It's built uh, on a little board with some logic chips and a GAL that acts as controller for the CPU. I didn't buy the kit but I preferred to get the pre-built one. And this is the final result. With the new CPU, PLA, 7 memory chips and TED, Will the board now work? It's alive! What a beautiful screen. The plus 4 board is working. Now I can test, try and test the keyboard before I put some contact cleaner. And then we also try to put some well, no, actually it's in bad shape, but it's working. Yes, okay, good. I can now take care of the keys and the case. I will not retrobrite them, just give a good clean. 
I'm quite happy with the result. Time to put back together the whole plus four and test it with some games. Seems to work. jump in the future because while I was playing with the plus four I got a problem screen went blank again I checked all the connection and seems okay then I programmed the Diag 264 removed the kernel and put it inside because it's possible to use the Diag 264 also in this way and uh, now it helped to find the problem. It was actually a, a RAM that I've, I've already changed. Now it works well. I tested it also with uh, Frankenstein CPU. It works useful to know for uh, any future test on this kind of machines. The plus four is finished and working. Now it's nicer, it's a little cleaner. The only thing that I don't like is the label that the previous owner indeed used some glue to attach it. And uh, there's a lot of residues here, but uh, I can't uh, remove it without scratching the case or uh, ruining the label. So. I think that uh, it will stay like this. But now with the pieces from um, Daniel, it works well. And indeed, I will need at least one adapter for the joystick because uh, otherwise I can't uh, play all the games because few actually uh, works just with the keyboard. Anyway, I am happy to have this nice little machine from the 264 series. That's it. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you had fun. Uh, if you want to put a like, put a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel because it will help a lot. I hope to see you soon. Take care.